Okay, so we're going to talk about properties and triangles. The first theorem we're going to be talking about is the side symmetry theorem. Okay, and the idea is you have a triangle here. You have one triangle. Okay, and let's call that A, B, C. And I'm going to draw a parallel line, a line parallel to AC. It could be anywhere. And, and in a previous lesson, in a previous lesson, um, we connected the midpoints, but we're, we don't care about congruency anymore and, you know, equal things. We just want, you know, proportion. So um, I'm drawing in DE such that DE is parallel to AC. And it's parallel because I said so. That, that's how we constructed it. The claim is it breaks it up into two parts. The claim is that AD over DB is in proportion to CE to EB. That's the claim. Once again, you know, if you have these parts, they're not congruent, and then you have these parts down here. The once again, AD to DB is equal to EC to EB. Well, let's prove that. Let's prove that. And, and we need a, a, a nifty little algebraic trick. It's kind of cool if you think about it. So the first thing is we want to prove two triangles congruent. So I, t I see two triangles here. I see a little triangle and I see a big triangle. We're going to prove big is similar to small. So first, prove big is similar to small. Well, that's not difficult because we said we stated in the given, we said that DE was parallel to AC. That was given. Therefore, we can say that BDE is, is congruent to angle, angle A. And we could say that um, BED is congruent to angle C because of uh, corresponding angles. And if we, if we have to push it, we can say that angle B is congruent to angle B. Remember, angle B are in the small and the big. If you have to pull them apart, that's fine. Here's a little, you know, B, D, E, and here's a big triangle, A, B, C. Once again, yeah, B is congruent to B, reflexive. So, so that means that triangle um, A, B, C is similar to triangle uh, D, B, E due to an uh, angle angle. Okay, good. Well, if we have two triangles that are similar, let's set up some proportions. So I'm going to say, and I'll do it, oh, I can do it down here. I'm going to write in this kind of, that AB over DB is equal to BC over BE. Once again, big side over little side, big side over little side. Well, you're saying, Mr. Allen, that's great that I, I, but I need this part over this, you know, AD. I don't have the orange, I have the whole sign. Well, here's a little nifty little trick. We're gonna write AB as AD plus DB. And I'm gonna write BC as EC plus EB. Right? Now, if you think about it, Algebraically, we have AD over DB plus DB over D. DB is equal to EC over DB plus EB over DB. Oh, I'm sorry. No, this is EB. I apologize. BE, BE. 
Sorry, sorry. Well, what you notice that these are one, this is one and this is one. So this cancels out with this, like this is an algebra problem. And we're left with AD over DB is equal to CE over EB. And that's the trick. So that's the idea. So let's work on a problem. Let me get a new pen. This is running out of ink. So let's get a problem on the board. Let's see. We have a triangle. Okay. And I've drawn, and let's call it A, B, C. I've drawn in D, E. I've drawn in D, E. So that DE is parallel to AC. So immediately you know, oh, side splitter theorem. Once again, you know these are parallel, you know what's going on here. You should expect to see the segment. So I'm going to say that DB is 5 and uh, AD is 8, D, the BE is 7, and EC is X. So there's three things I'm going to ask you. The first thing is um, find X. The next thing I want to know, what is the rate, what is the ratio of similarity? And C is if, if DE equals A, then I want you to find AC. Okay, well, immediately you recognize it as the sine splitter theorem. So you say, okay. Let's look at part A. You say 5 over 8 is equal to 7 over x. Now, you, you cross multiply, 5x equals 56, x equals 11.2. You have your calculator, you can do long division. Part B is for the ratio of similarity. What is the ratio? Well, it's very straightforward. We're looking for ratios. Remember we said that two ratios are in proportion if they have the same simplest form. Well, five to eight, that is the ratio of five to eight. A, a seven to 11, 11.2, that's a little weird. We don't like decimals um, in these early lessons. So if we can have integers, you know, so the ratio of similarity, ratio of similarity is five over eight. Um, we want, once, once again, we want both of these to be integers. If you think about it, like slope, if it could be positive or negative, but we like nice integers, you know, five over two, one, you know, seven, negative two over three. Um, and that's the idea of the ratio. Part C, well, part C is very straightforward. We're told that D is eight. How do we find AC? Well, very straightforward. We know the ratio, well, oh, oh, no, that's wrong. I apologize. I apologize. What is the ratio of similarity between the triangles? Ah, oh, no, I made a mistake. 5 over 13. Ah, right? So that's going to help us with part C. How do we find DE? Well, we know the triangles are similar. Sorry about that. We know the triangles are similar. And so we know that 5 is to 13 as 8 is to AC. Um, let's see. 5AC is equal to 13 times 8. Hey, Siri. 13 times 8. 13 times 8 is 104. Hey, Siri. 104 divided by 5. 104 divided by 5 is 20.8. 20.8. Next theorem. It's kind of like a corollary. 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 Um, basically, it's, just, it's kind of like a side square theorem. The idea is if we have three parallel lines, with two transversals, then the segments cut off by them are in proportion. And the intersected 
sides are in proportion. Then the intersected sides are in proportion. This is just fun stuff. Proportion. So let me just make a quick picture. So we have, you know, here's, oh, sorry. So we start off with three parallel lines. Parallel, parallel, parallel. And I'm going to, so it's called, yeah, and I'm going to draw in uh, two transversals anywhere. Transversal, transversal. Maybe there's parallel, maybe they're not. It doesn't matter. The claim is, the claim is, um, so we have A, B, C, D, E, and F. The claim is, once again, these are parallel. The claim is that AB over BC is, is equal to DE over EF. And we're not going to do the proof. It kind of, once again, it's a corollary off of the uh, side splitter, so it's kind of the same thing. You, you can imagine me extending the triangle up. And so the example in the book is they make like the example, once again, you have like a, like a this, this line, it looks like this, and then it's like a sailboat, like a sail. And the idea is they made like all these stripes. So this is the sail of a boat and like there's stripes. So, so this is two and there are, all these lines are parallel. The lines are the transversals and these are the methods. It's two, X, three, two, 1.7, 1.7, y, 1.7. And the idea is find x and y. You know, find x and y, and you say, okay, all these lines are parallel, and these are the two transversals, so 2 to x is equal to 1.7 to 1.7, so x equals 2. <coughs> And then you would say, you know, x over, you know, you'd say, let's see, 2 to, th so 2 to 3 is equal to 1.7 to y. So you have 2y equals, uh, what is it, 5.1, y equals, hey Siri, 5.1 divided by 2. And that's what that's about. These are just cute little exercises. They're great because, once again, you're looking for relationships. The last thing we're going to talk about, this is kind of cool. The last theorem we want to talk about is the triangle bisector theorem. This is kind of, this is kind of cool. You know, it's a little old school, but, like, we're proving all these things in triangles. These are relationships that, that you know, people discover between triangles when you're just drawing diagrams. The, it goes something like this. It's kind of cool. You have any triangle. So number three, this is the triangle bisector theorem. And it goes something like this. You have any triangle. You have any triangle. And so you have a triangle here. And the idea is what I'm going to draw in is an angle bisector. I'm drawing in an angle bisector. So this is congruent to this. It turns out, this is kind of awesome, the ratio that it splits up the opposite side is in proportion to the remaining two sides. So A over B is equal to C over D. It's kind of cool, right? Once again, if this is an angle, if, if the segment draws an angle bisector, the ratio of the, the parts of the, of the intersected side are in proportion to the other two sides. That's kind of cool. And so let me do a problem, and you can just quickly see that, and then I'll show you the proof. So if we have an example here, 
and I give you a triangle, and I tell you that the uh, I drew an angle bisector, and I give you the sides six, five, eight x. You can simply write five is to eight as six is to x. That I think that's that's awesome. So what is it? Five x equals forty eight. X equals, let's see, is it 8, 9, 9.6? That's cool. How is that true? Well, <coughs> what's the proof? So we have a triangle, right? All we have is a triangle. What we're going to do is we're going to construct. The proof goes something like this. You're going to draw your triangle. Well, let's use this triangle. Come on, let's do it. Okay. We have a triangle. Okay. Let's call it A. <coughs> We're going to draw an angle bisector. So this is so it's angle one, this can go to angle two. What I want you to do is I want you to construct, I want you to construct a line C E so so that such that C E is parallel to B D. And then I want you to extend, extend A, B to, let's call that F. So what we've done is that we've actually recreated the side splitter theorem. So let's, let's see what we did. Once again, we had our original triangle. I, I drew a line, F, C is parallel to D, B. <coughs> so that's what's going on here. Well, if these lines are parallel, that means this is two. Good. Okay. Also, so we know that angle two is congruent to this angle down here. Also, because these lines are parallel in corresponding angles, this angle here is congruent to this angle here. Well, these two, this is one, but we know that one is congruent to two, therefore this side is congruent to this side. Now, first of all, from the side splitter theorem, we can say that AD over DC is equal to AB over BE, uh, BF, sorry, BF. But here's the cool thing. Because these angles are congruent, this triangle is isosceles, and therefore BF is equal to BC. And we get our interesting theorem that AD to DC is similar to, is, is proportional to AB to BC. Cool. And that's basically it. Sorry about that. We're kind of in a rush this morning. Anyway, just to, to, to uh, yeah, so we have the side splitter theorem, we have the corollary. And we have this triangle bisector theorem. As if you see the line bisected, if you see a second bisects the angle, it creates uh, it by it it, bis it it intersects the base such that the parts are in proportion to the the, the ratio of the other two sides. <laughs>